All right, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Good evening. Depends on where your local time zone is. We are all here in the same time zone. Uh, this is Minsek Kim. I'm a product manager from the Cisco, or I should I say the Meraki? Yeah, Cisco and Meraki is one company, so uh, I'll just call myself as a Cisco. Even though template is a Meraki template, but uh, don't worry about it. So key is the, uh, the whole idea that how we are able to leverage the Cisco's and Meraki infrastructure and what we have learned from the client. What we have learned the client and where we are and where we go. All right. So uh, let's start from the basic. We talked a lot about packet capture, site survey, everything, all morning, pretty much. Why we are doing it? Because we are relying on the infrastructures, the APs are relying on the client data. The problem is the client data is something only half true. It's a half right, half blinded. Why is blinded? Because clients never tell who they are. They never tell us what they're thinking. We know that this client device, let's say an iPhone or Mac OS, Sonoma, but can we get that data from the profiling, right? DACP, HTTP, we do all this uh, circus dancing, but we only can go so far with that reverse engineering. How about the RF? I mean, how about the troubleshooting? I mean, we talk about a lot on the how Adrium is difficult to solve, it tangled everywhere. Can you get it from the packet capture? Most of the time, it's just we have still have a small and bits and pieces. Because of the clients, I never really tell their supplicant issues as a part of the reason code. The reason code, ADA 11, was so politically correctly made, we really didn't know that what is going on from the supplicant side. What about the RSSI and SNR? Yeah, this is a really the key idea. Why we have to have a site survey? Because each client built differently. Can he rely on AP to magically figure it out the location and coverage? No way. Because AP always see the client in a different way as I'm seeing from the, uh, as a client seeing the AP. What we have done recently was we made some visibility tool, you know, that Wi-Fi industries are spending a lot of time on the assurance and whatnot. And what we found is uh, all this client coverage data is also, I mean, it's surprisingly good. It's mind-bogglingly high and, uh, I would say, 50 dB, 60 dB, RSSI, but they are still roam like crazy. Certain iPhone roam five times with a negative of five, 55 RSSI. How I can explain to customer? They're asking, oh yeah, I mean, do we have a coverage problem here? But your tool is saying that my coverage is wonderful. Yes, because that's how we see from the AP. What about the uh, actual nugget? We talk all about the uh, WP3, WP2, transition mode, why there's an incompatible, why the SHA-256 is not incompatible, because the client are dumb. They build differently. They have an IE that we broadcast, we announced, and they couldn't understand it. You know what, I, I, I don't get it. Let me just back off from the SAP. And we never know until we hit by truck, right? So, idea is, let it talk. Let client and let AP to talk each other. So we had a privilege uh, from the, uh, all the industry and the client vendor who is willing to work with uh, somewhat like a big company like Cisco. And then uh, we were able to get this data from the, uh, pretty much every major devices, like uh, Samsung's, Intel's. I just had a chat with the Samsung the <laughs> VP yesterday. Uh, and then I was trying to confirm that what device are supporting. So uh, pretty much every Samsung device is made after 2019 giving us all these analytic data to Cisco. Same for the Intel. Uh, almost every Intel devices driver from 2020 and beyond provide all these details. What do you mean by all detail? Right? Let's be specific. Client RSSI data, scanning neighbor data. If their client failed to join, then they're sending us the association failure reason code. Device detail, profile information, driver version, firmware version, you name it. So uh, we are able to populate this result. But this is not about the Cisco can do a lot of this uh, 
I mean, dashboarding, it's not about, it's more of the industry. So well, let's just skip the whole pages. And uh, let's talk about uh, some real nugget. What we have learned from this client analytics. Let's start digging into the, uh, the baseline. Because all this data was, came from the uh, Cisco Cloud. And Cisco Cloud, to make it more believable, usually, I mean, if we have more data, bigger data rate, it's more believable, right? Because every network built differently. So we have about 14 million AP connected and uh, constantly giving us a live telemetry. So we can pretty much leverage this data set to get a real-time client data. And we have about like 9 million AP, uh, networks that is available. I mean, a lot of big numbers, right? So uh, what do you really mean by <laughs> I want to go back to uh, our, some of the history lessons. Uh, so if you look at it, this is iPhone uh, adoption or connected iPhone device level for each model. You see the big jump on the certain model? What is this? This is iPhone 11. So what happened between iPhone 11 and 12? Why suddenly Apple was suddenly changed the entire world? Because that's the time that uh, people really couldn't go out, really couldn't hang out with they have a I mean, the dinner with the family, as a friend outside, they have to stuck in the home. So uh, what they can do is, yeah, let's just buy the new phone, right? Let's have a new toy. So uh, from the iPhone 11 and onward, there's a huge growth in the uh, new AP. Uh, of course, the 12 and 13, 15. Uh, last one is the uh, iPhone 15. So uh, just uh, exact one month after the iPhone 15 is started to ship out to end user. So uh, I'm also iPhone 15. I was able to change it after three years, which is a 5% of the entire iPhone population today. And then all these devices, more important part is uh, 90 point, 94 point, almost 95% of the iPhone devices are Wi-Fi 6 AP. Wi-Fi 6 is a completely mature this is a time that we, everyone needs to embrace Wi-Fi 6, and uh, this is a new norm, right? So there's no surprise. How about the iOS? We found that most of the end users are changing, upgrading their iPhone OS pretty diligently. So uh, if you look at it, 99% of the iPhone have iOS 15 and above. And you know what? When the uh, fast ROM, 11 kv all, all these things had happened in iPhone world, iOS 10. And we are living the world of iOS 15 as the oldest iPhone OS. So now you can see the, how much that we have a mature clients nowadays. What about the, uh, the performance? And um, when people I are mean, like, frustrated by Wi-Fi, it's not really about the Wi-Fi being slow. It's more about when I have a WebEx, when I have a Zoom meeting, WebEx MS Teams, my video got pixelated or, 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 or jagged, all these weird symptoms happen, that's when customers get frustrated, right? And when it happens, every time clients need, need to do renew the session, right? Roaming and all. So if you look at it, the non 11 r network, which is a stick, pretty much a PMK caching, right? Sticky PMK caching, default mode. They have about average 600 millisecond delay. Well, or more than that, there's more than one second delay, right? Uh, uh, and then uh, Adaptive 11R have 176 milliseconds, which is very much on the edge of a VoIP-capable delay. And then 11R, obviously better, 91 milliseconds, right? What about the iPhone, what about the Apple performance? And Apple cases, Adaptive 11R is somehow performed better than 11R. This was a quite refreshing discovery. Both 11 hour or adaptive 11 hour, Apple device was able to record the less than 100 millisecond delay. And 11 hour support since 2016. This is a, roaming, a fast roaming adoption. The top three vertical here is the retail, professional services, and manufacturing. These are three, three standing out vertical. Anyone can guess what this number means? No. This is a percentage of a network that has 11R enabled. Crazy, right? We have, in Morocco, we have 8.7 million network, and only less, less than 200,000 network have 11R enabled. Now, 
you can see the how much this community can contribute the human, <laughs> human being, right? You can change the humanity by enabling 11R to the network. <laughs> it will work. I will give my name. I will give my phone number. All right. So uh, some of the interesting conclusions, but since I'm running out of my time, uh, the idea is uh, having this client data and cloud scale allow us to understand client better and allow us to uh, react the, and uh, move the industry forward. So that's about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>